we're not talking thousands of dollars just for the grapple. We're talking an additional potential thousands of dollars for the behind the scenes, the additional function, the hoses, the fittings, the connection. Do you know what you need? Guys, how we doing? Welcome to Goodworks Tractors. Today we are talking about grapples. Grapples to fit your subcompact, your compact, maybe even a utility tractor. There's a lot of factors that go into selecting the right grapple for you, and I can tell you price is probably going to be far down on that list after we go through it today. Now there are going to be hidden costs involved with getting a grapple well beyond the price of just the grapple itself. So we'll get to that a little bit later on. And of course, every one of these grapples you see here are going to have pros and cons. There's going to be a trade-off with everything. We're going to get into that now. This video is comprised of questions that you guys have asked me over the years on what the right grapple is for my machine. If you like what you see in this video, consider giving me a thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button right down below. And always read through that description right down underneath the video. There's going to be all sorts of helpful links down there where you can get these grapples or other attachments and accessories for your machine. Or head on over to GoodWorksTractors.com. So say you send me an email or you give me a phone call and you say, I need a grapple. I'm going to ask you three questions to start off with to kind of get a real good idea of what you're looking at. Number one. What kind of tractor do you have? I need to know your tractor model because that's gonna let me know the approximate size of the grapple that you can put on there. Second, I'm gonna ask you, do you have a quick attach between your loader and your bucket? In other words, are you able to take your bucket off of your loader, not your entire loader assembly, just the bucket? Can you separate that from your loader with a couple pins, a couple levers, maybe take 30 seconds or a minute at most to do? Or is it a pinned on version where you have to take some tools out, some wrenches, and pound some pins out of there just to get your bucket off. Question number three, do you have additional hydraulics on your tractor? Not just the hydraulics to make your loader go up and down and curl and roll the bucket. Do you have an additional function besides that? If you were able to answer yes to all three of those questions, then you are well on your way to getting the right grapple, a traditional hydraulic grapple to fit your machine. However, if you answered no, we're gonna to have to do a little bit more digging to see what options we have available. We're gonna get into those as well. So those hidden costs for a grapple. If you wanna run a traditional hydraulic setup, you may have to add on a diverter kit or a third function to your machine. You may need to add on a quick attach system between your loader and your bucket. A lot of grapples are not gonna come with hoses and fittings. So you'll have a cylinder right here and then you'll have to get from this point all the way down to your connection here made up as well. So you could be looking at hundreds and hundreds of additional dollars beyond just the cost of the grapple, maybe even thousands of dollars if you have to add on a quick attach system as well. So as you can see here, you have a great assortment of tractors, a subcompact in the middle. You got a couple mid-size compacts, my 4066 are on one end, my big old five series um, utility tractor over here as well. A grapple like this is gonna weigh around 1,100 pounds. Obviously way too big for these other tractors out here. You know, as you get to a brush crusher, that's what you're gonna see here. That's gonna weigh somewhere in the 300-ish ballpark. You got a little mini grapple here, perfect for a subcompact tractor weighing in around 200-ish pounds, give or take. Another version of the brush crusher here as well about 250 pounds ballpark give or take and then over to my double claw grapple work saver this is six foot wide on the 4066 around 550 pounds so you want to size these appropriately say you have a loader like on a little 1025r it only lists maybe 800 pounds max if you put a four or five hundred pound grapple on that what good is that going to do you? you're going to lift a couple uh, piles of little twigs and branches not too much so you want to size these things accordingly and that's why it's very important for me to know what you have up front what a quick attach is again is that connection point right here between the grapple and the loader the bucket and the loader the pallet forks and the loader the snow pusher and the loader you get the idea you want to have a quick attach system this is the global style of quick attach over here you have a john deere style of quick attach but one of the most common on the planet is also the skid steer quick attach so those are your three biggies right there and if you don't have that if you have a pinned on bucket where you can't just quickly change out those attachments on the front end it's going to be a bit of a problem. 
So if you have a pin down bucket, you're gonna to wanna to look into getting a quick attach system. The best one to go with, in my opinion, is gonna be that skid steer quick attach because it is the most prevalent that's out there on the market. However, to add that onto an aftermarket system can easily cost you $1,000. Unless you get lucky, you may be able to find something off the shelf somewhere for less than that. So that is a hidden cost you have to look out for. Now, additional hydraulic functions. If you're gonna have those, typically they're gonna start somewhere on the backside of your tractor. You're gonna see additional quick couplers that are mounted here, maybe down below further, or occasionally you will have a version that is just up where your loader connections are. Maybe it starts there and then runs to the front for very specific applications. But typically you're gonna see something like this. Maybe not all these hydraulics, but maybe you'll have one set of outlets right here and hoses plugged into them. This is actually where the power, the hydraulic power for my grapple starts right here. It comes out of the um, transaxle to these outlets and then these flexible hoses kind of run up to the midway point because this loader can come on and off. Up here at the midway point, you'll see these two hoses right here are going all the way back and then all the way up front as well but they're going to have a connection here because if i want to take the loader completely off i can also disconnect these grapple hoses as well you'll then see these are hard lines right here feeding the hydraulic system all the way up front to these quick couplers and then this particular grapple has these two hoses right here i did have to get different fittings to fit so some grapple manufacturers will include fittings some will include hoses and fittings some will include either one i'm a guy that prefers to not have either one because there's so many different configurations and variations on connection sizes, lengths, all that type of variable that just is not a one size fits all. So keep that in mind. You're probably gonna have to get different hoses or at least different fittings to fit your machine. But then the hoses come all the way up here and this is a double jaw. So it's gonna have two cylinders, one on the left, one on the right. And the hoses will actually fish right through uh, this, the square tubing up top and then feed individually to each cylinder. Now, I want you to know you don't have to pay the extra money to get this hard line kit. It is very nice, I'm not gonna deny that. But a lot of folks will have rubber hoses made up, take those all the way to the back, maybe run them to the midpoint if they want to and still put a quick coupler there, but then still have just more flexible rubber hoses made up and kind of feed them along the side and down to the front. So there's more than one way to skin a cat. Don't think you have to get this hard line kit. As nice as it is, it's very expensive as well. Now don't get too worried if you don't have those additional hydraulics on your tractor right now. I do have a solution for that or even solutions that don't require additional hydraulics at all. Okay, so if you don't have those additional hydraulics on your tractor, I've got a solution for you. I'm excited to share it. Used it actually yesterday out in the field for the first time, had it all set up on my machine. Don't pay attention to this silver contraption down here right now, we're gonna get to that as well. But this controller right here and the electrical harness and then the additional um, hydraulic hose that all go up front, it's gonna be a diverter kit that gives you that third function capability to open and close the jaws of a grapple. So you don't lose the ability to curl and roll your bucket or to raise and lower your loader. You can do both of those and still open and close the jaws of the grapple. The great thing about the Summit system here is that it's a DIY. So if you have a couple hours on the weekend, maybe even after work, this is something you can tackle yourself. I'm, I'm telling you, it's not that challenging to do. If I can do it, you can do it, but it's gonna give you that third function versatility you know it's a diverter kit so you push a button here and then you're going to basically transition that flow from the curl roll function to the open close function of your grapple or say you want to add on a hydraulic angling plow blade you can do that as well with a feature like this so you can save a whole bunch of money compared to taking it into the dealer to have them added on so the great thing about summit here is that they have kits for varying sizes and brands of tractors both for the front end of the tractor for the back side of the tractor and guess what you can get five percent off with code gwt if you go to summit hydraulics there will be a link down below now I want you to pay close attention as well. This silver contraption right here with this harness is gonna be part of the electric grapple system. I did a lot of videos and put out a lot of information on that last year. So check out that if you wanna get a more in-depth look. It doesn't require any additional hydraulics. It's an all-in-one package. So you get the, the grapple, the entire wiring harness, uh, the thumb control mechanism here, which I have this just kind of turned and out of the way right now because I was trying this version out as well. And it even includes everything to go down to your battery terminals for the power source. So if you think maybe that Summit Hydraulics kit is a little bit too intimidating for you, an even easier solution is gonna be this electric grapple. It's simply routing some cabling, zip tying it off, hooking it up to your battery terminals, and away you go. So if you're thinking, man, I don't wanna deal with the hydraulics, I don't wanna deal with the electric, and even simpler more basic option here is the brush crusher it comes in a couple a few variants really depending on if you have a john deere quick attach a skid steer quick attach you can get a, a middle teeth for some 
not middle teeth for the others, but, but this operates in a different format here. So your top jaw is actually going to be controlled by the curl roll function that is on your loader. So that's how this top jaw is gonna open and close. The bottom jaw is gonna kinda swing freely until it gets to a point where it stops, what you see right here. So that is gonna come to a, a certain point there and it'll stay. So as you close this top jaw down on it, it's gonna clamp against that. And then when you open back up, it's gonna release whatever load you have here. So last year, this was the most popular grapple that I sold far and away. It wasn't even close. And I think that's for a couple of reasons. One, the cheaper you go for a grapple option, the more popular something is gonna be. And this happens to be one of the cheaper options that are out there. Also, it's the simplicity, right? There's no other connections to be made. Most uh, owners aren't gonna have those additional functions on their tractor or don't wanna deal with the cost. So that combination there has really made this very, very popular. Again, I probably sold every nine out of 10 grapples were the brush crusher system. Now, what kind of salesman would I be if I didn't say you can get these grapples from me? Whether you see a brush crusher, an electric grapple, the hydraulic grapple, a mini one, a big one, I can help you out, goodworkstractors.com. So make sure you head there and see what grapple is the right one for you. Really, I'd encourage you to take notes. You may have to watch this video a couple times. You have mechanical operation, like the brush crusher, no other electric or hydraulic. Then you have the electric version. That would be the only additional function that you need. Or you have the more traditional hydraulic gravel as well. So mechanical, electrical, hydraulic. So you can see right here, there's a pretty general theme in the construction, the configuration of the most popular style of grapple, which is gonna be the root grapple. This may be the most popular setup, but there's a variety out there, including rake grapples, rock grapples, bucket grapples, debris grapples, fork grapples, sweep action grapples, and manure silage grapples. I'm probably missing a few. On top of all of that, you're gonna have choices to make between a double top jaw, like what you see here. So two independent cylinders here that can clamp down at different angles to kind of really clamp on securely. That's a very nice feature to have, but typically the smaller you go, like on a 48 inch grapple here for a subcompact is when you're gonna see a single top jaw configuration instead. Now, I really wanna keep my opinion out of this for the most part, because I am asked all the time, what grapple would I get? Um, I'm just gonna say, I really did not think I was gonna like this design here, mainly this bottom jaw, where there's not really much of a bottom jaw. However, between using the hydraulic version uh, recently and then the same thing in the electric version all of last year, I really love this design. I really like how this back plate here is pretty much vertical to the ground. There's not long teeth coming out. I've really been able to to do well using this as a type of a root rake or just a, a rake for debris in general, kind of pushing things along. I even did some back filling of holes that I dug out with a stump bucket as well, but it's just very versatile. It kind of holds loads close to the tractor, which feels more stable. Um, a lot of the bigger ones that you'll see are gonna put that load a little bit further out. So not that that's a terrible thing. And sometimes you wanna, or you need to scoop under it, but for me, that's about as much of an opinion as you'll get. Cause I know I'm just asked all the time, so I might as well share it with you. Another popular question is, what is the max opening from the top to the bottom of the grapple? So really the max opening is a little bit tricky and almost a little bit misleading. They all measure it a little bit differently, you know, because the outside point, you have to get whatever you're grabbing onto between this outside point here. But if you look on the brush crusher, for example, it's gonna be a lot wider right here than it is out here on the tips. So it's a little bit deceiving. You know, I think typically the way to sum it up is, the bigger the grapple, the bigger the opening you're gonna have in general, and the smaller machines are typically gonna have smaller openings. Typically somewhere in the maybe 30 to 40 inch range, again, it could vary. And once you get up to the big hoss over there on the five series, I think that's even roughly close to five foot or somewhere around there, something gigantic, you know? The point being, if you need to know that information, it's probably gonna be found in the listing online, but keep in mind that it could be this dimension here on the outside, it could be the dimension on the inside, it's gonna to be tough to know. So you never wanna max out your equipment to begin with. If you think you're gonna to have to grab onto a lot of 40 inch diameter logs, make sure you get something that's well oversized. But at that point, you're gonna need a big old machine to do it anyways. Anytime you're using your front end loader, whether it's with pallet forks, a bucket, or a grapple, you need to have something on the backside, like what you see here. Because if you're lifting something heavy up there, the backside is gonna wanna lift up this way. So you need to put counterweight back here or ballast weight. You have a lot of forms, a lot of versions you can get between suitcase weights, liquid ballast, which is just a, a liquid that's inside the tires here, kinda out of the way. You can get wheel weights, you can get a ballast box, even adding on a quick hitch like this, not only adds convenience, but adds another 70 pounds as well. 
The bigger your tractor, of course, the more ballast weight you need. I have 1,500 pounds of liquid ballast inside these rear tires. I still have a ballast box on the back side. Even on the small subcompact tractor, you need over 1,000 pounds on the back side per your owner's manual. I can tell you most folks don't take this topic very seriously, and that's not one of those things you want to find out the hard way. Guys, so we're back out here the next morning. I forgot a critical piece of information that I wanted to share with you, which is how you actually would operate the open-close function on a hydraulic grapple. There's gonna be several different setups available, so we're gonna go through that quickly so you can have that information at hand. So in my 4066R here, we have what's called an electro-hydraulic third function. You'll see this thumb control here where you can push uh, the top section up here or the bottom section to open or close the grapple function. So this is probably the most convenient setup you could go with. However, it's probably also the most expensive. Over here on this 3032E, it is equipped with something called a fourth and a fifth function. That's gonna be these two levers back here. There's actually four Four ports that are on the back side again remember two ports controls one function so you'd have your loader joystick up here to control raising and lowering your loader or curling and rolling uh, the loader or the or the grapple but then if you want to open and close the jaws of the grapple you have to go from here back to here so it's doable it's not convenient but if you already have something set up like this and you want to minimize your cost again you could run hoses from back here all the way up front and control it that way it's just something to keep in mind with the Summit Diverter Kit or any kind of diverter kit that would be similar uh, to what you see set up right here, you would have that third function that's added on. However, normal operation when you go in or out like this is going to curl or roll the grapple or the bucket. However, when you engage the button right here and then go in and out, that's gonna open and close the jaws of the grapple. So you, you go this way and you clamp down on your load and you let go and then you can rock it back, lift it up, that kind of thing. So it takes, a few tries to get used to. I'll say when I used it yesterday, this is my first time using this setup, I had the hang of it within five minutes. So as you can see, this is a very convenient location and also substantially cheaper than some of the other options that are out there. And again, don't forget, you can get 5% off with code GWT at Summit Hydraulics. So while we're here, we'll point out the electric controls as well. Imagine this joystick isn't on here. I would have this shifted up and kind of rotated and oriented uh, appropriately, but you could just use this little thumb button to open and close the jaws of the grapple with the electric version of this WorkSaver Mini Grapple. This is a John Deere 3520, a little bit older generation, and Kubota's, any other model that's a little bit older could be set up similar to what you see here with your loader joystick. And then if you wanna have that third function control, you'll still have an outlet on the back. And right now, you've got these hoses tied in here to actually control the raising or lowering of the, uh, the mower deck that's down below, but you could unplug this if you didn't have a mower deck on and then plug in some grapple hoses, run them up front. You'll have your typical loader functionality right here on the joystick and then just down below is gonna be a lever to open and close the jaws of the grapple. So not the most convenient, but again, if you're working with an existing tractor and you don't wanna make modifications to it, it's not the worst thing in the world either. And just to reiterate, if you get one of the brush crusher options that you see out here, there's not gonna be an additional lever, no additional button, no additional function that you need to have on your tractor. That's the convenience with that option. Guys, so hopefully that gives you a really good overview. It answers a lot of questions for you. It gives you some insight on what you need to operate a grapple and maybe how to select the right grapple to meet your needs. Don't forget, at Summit Hydraulics, you get 5% off with code GWT if you wanna to try to tackle that DIY diverter kit yourself. And don't forget, I can help you out with a grapple as well. We ship grapples all over the country, all the time. Check out goodworkstractors.com and check out the description below for links to all sorts of grapple options on my website. So if you found this helpful, if you liked what you see here, I'd really love to get a thumbs up from you. And if you wanna see more tractor videos, hit that subscribe button down below to be notified. Thanks so much for sticking around and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.